Hello, uh, thank you for watching. My name is Al Sagala. I'm president of the Calaveras County Taxpayer Association. And our guest uh, today is George Runner, who's our representative for the Board of Equalization. Uh, George, tell us um, about uh, your, your role as an elected member of the uh, Board of Equalization. Sure, uh, yeah, a lot of people don't realize, they see it on the ballot every four years that they, they see uh, somebody running for the Board of Equalization. California is very unique. It's the only state that has a directly elected tax board. And uh, there's actually four of us that are elected by district then in the state of California. These districts are really large then because of that. Uh, I represent about nine million people. And my district starts down in Southern California and then comes up the, uh, the kind of the east side, of the state of California includes all the Central Valley, all the foothill communities. Uh, and goes all the way to the Oregon border. So it's about 60% of the land area, state of California. So it's very unique. California is the only only state, like I said, that has an elected tax board. And basically, our view is it makes makes that Californians that have a taxpayer advocate, somebody who's there to protect them when it comes to taxpayer issues. Hmm. George, is there any possibility of changing the name um, um, from the? Uh, um, Board of Equalization to the Board of something else? Well, you know, I don't want to be made equal. <laughs> right. You know, and again, it's, it's interesting because, of, you know, folks say, how, what's that have to do with taxes equal? Well, it's kind of interesting how it started. And it actually started in the issue of, of trying to create equal property tax. It was uh, The Board of Equalization was actually started in the late 1800s. Uh, and what was happening is railroads were having difficulty because they'd, go, they'd run their tracks from county to county. And what would happen is the ca one county would be, have really high uh, property tax. Another county would have a very low property tax. And so it, they uh, took a, an initiative to the people of California back in the late 1800s to create what was called then the Board of Equalization, to equalize property tax. I never knew that. Um, that's where it starts from. So that's where it got, got oh. its name um, in order to do that. And so that, so that the, one of the responsibilities that the still, board still has today is to set property tax rates for railroads, for now for pipelines, for anything that goes across the county lines. And so that's one of the roles we have. We, make sure, we need to make sure that the, the property taxes are equal, that each, each county doesn't have its own process, and therefore these companies that are run, running from one county to another pay different amounts of taxes. Now, since then, the legislature has given the Board of Equalization a lot of other responsibilities. Uh, the primary one that people are familiar with, we, we actually oversee about 30 uh, taxes and fees. The biggest one that people are familiar with, if you're in business, and that is that is, is basic is is probably sales tax, and so we collect sales tax uh, from people who remit the sales tax and then distribute that out to the property authority. So that's when the, that's the biggest role that the board has right now. What do uh, California taxpayers need to know about dealing with state tax agencies? Well, you know, the biggest issue with dealing with state tax agencies is to know you have rights. Uh, one of the issues that, that uh, I'm convinced of, and again, we see ourselves as an advocate for taxpayers. One of the things I'm convinced of is that people are just sometimes too afraid to know that they actually have rights. Uh, in fact, it, this, it's not something that somehow uh, you know, the Board of Equalization or the State Franchise Tax Board came up with. It's actually the, the state legislature, the governor, wanted to ensure that people understand that when they are dealing with a tax agency, that they are due certain rights in that process, that they can't be abused in that process, they can't, they, that, that they have rights of knowledge, they have rights of information. Uh, and that's really important. And so that's one of, the, one of the services that we want to provide for taxpayers. And again, we see ourselves as a taxpayer advocate, protecting taxpayers from what can sometimes be an overbearing tax agencies uh, at times. Why are tax, taxes so high in California? Well, you know, it's the, you know, they are. They're incredibly high. Uh, California has some of the highest tax rates in the nation. I think overall we're about third or fourth highest tax state in the nation uh, when you combine all kinds of, all, all the different tax issues. And it, what's frustrating about it is that people are not getting any kind of value for their taxes that they're paying. We pay the highest gas tax. We, we pay the highest tax on gasoline, for instance, on, on, on both sales tax and excise tax. But people look around our roads and they say, what happened? How can we pay the highest taxes, but yet we get so few, we, we, we have such poor services there? We pay the highest taxes in regards to some of the highest income tax. We have paid the highest sales tax. And we look at situations where we have some of the, high, the highest paid teachers, but yet we look at our schools and we say, but they're not, but they're, but they're not the best operating schools. 
we're not seeing kids benefit from those high taxes and high salaries that we're paying. So, you know, I, I think the reality is that people, um, there's just a, a segment of Californians, the majority in the legislature, unfortunately, that believe government is a big answer for everything. And as a result of that, they need more money in order to make government bigger. I'm an opponent of big government. I think gov big government is very problematic. Uh, and uh, it undermines personal liberty. And so uh, the fact is, I think taxes are high because you have a lot of people who are elected to office in the state of California who believe big government is a good thing. Well, the Calaverse, uh, Calaverse County Tax Credit Association certainly agrees with you yeah. on that. We, we actually uh, uh, are most concerned about uh, taxes, as you are. Sure. But we're also concerned about the other element of human liberty. Absolutely. We, we, uh, We've been monitoring the general plan uh, update process, and we're we're struggling to try to try to make the general plan uh, as it evolves in the update process to be more freedom friendly, more Absolutely. more friendly to property rights. Because what what what? How can you have economic development if people come here have to go through a mountain of regulation and 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 exorbitant well, fees to, 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 to try to build something. You're absolutely right. You know, I tell people, the fact is that, that my family came here in the late 50s, <clears throat> excuse me, in the middle 50s uh, from the East Coast because California was a great place of opportunity. We had this wonderful climate. Uh, you know, it was just a place to go, raise your family, grow a business. It was just, it was just the, it was the dream. Yeah. And yet here we are, uh, what, almost 50, 60 years later from, from when my family got here, and we've basically made the dream a nightmare. We've basically chased pe people who, who wanted to be here because of the great climate, because of the great opportunities of freedom. And what we've done is we've chased them back out of the state. And we've done it through high taxes and overregulation. All things and public policies have been put into place. The climate hasn't changed. You know, the beautiful scenery we have across California hasn't changed. It's the public policy that's changed that's made California a place where people don't want to stay and, last, it, it, and invest their money and, and raise their families. Well, these people that are leaving are really your job providers. These, these are their employers that are leaving. These are the people that are investing in, in, in uh, new, uh, new plants, new stores, new, new products, and they're going elsewhere, which means the remaining people uh, that are left have, uh, are, 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 are more likely to be struggling and, right. and uh, lose their prosperity because the, the producers are leaving. Absolutely, and the problem with that is, it's, and it's not only the large, it's not only companies that are leaving, not only the only entrepreneur that's leaving, but it's the middle income person who all of a sudden has some ability to, ch to move. For instance, somebody who, who's worked their lives, they've got a decent retirement, and they say, well, where do I want to go now that I can, now that I don't have to be anchored to a, to a community or to an employer, where can I go? And they leave California. Yeah. And those are good middle incomes that, are, that people are getting retirement that now we're not getting as a result of that. So, yeah, I'd, and, you know, one of the issues that I remind people about, and that is higher taxes, is a direct attack on liberty. Because it, if, if, when you pay more out of your pocket for your government services, that means you have less to spend. You have less choices. And somebody else is making your choices for you. And again, the bigger government gets, the more choices it wants to make for you. The more choices it makes for you, the more expensive it gets, and the more money they've got to come back and get from you. Yeah, it's like a dog chasing its tail. Absolutely. It doesn't seem to get anywhere. <laughs> Unfortunately, yeah. it's the taxpayer who gets bitten in the back end on yeah. that deal. I uh, read a book um, some time back, and it, it's kind of a classic. It's uh, The name of the book is The Law by... Uh, uh, Frederick Bustier. Uh huh. He's familiar a, with it. He's a Frenchman. It's very, he, very a, short little book. It's very little, good. But boy, is it is so powerful. Right. Um, uh, what um, uh, Mr. Bustier did, he connected the three basic rights: life, liberty, and property, mm -hmm. which are also in a U.S. Constitution on the Fourteenth and Fifth Amendments. And he showed that each of these have to be respected together. Right. You can't you can't attack property rights and still maintain liberty. And you can't take liberty and property and expect to have life left. Right. <laughs> right. In order to have life, people have to... Well, it comes to a basic competing philosophy. Yeah. There's a basic... The philosophy that we see right now in Sacramento, unfortunately, is this philosophy that says government can make better choices than individuals. Yes. And as a result of that, then, they seek to go ahead and grow government, yeah. grow government programs, grow government outreach. 
uh, because they believe that they can make better choices than the individual. And that's the direct undermining both of your individual tax rights and your, and your ability to spend your money, but also in regards to the choices that you have. Yeah, we have a, a 218 is one of the propositions that uh, is uh, uh, there to help protect uh, uh, over, overreaching government. Right. And uh, we had an interesting thing in Calaveras County uh, uh, recently, uh, there was, a, there was uh, quite a few letters written, over 2,000 I think, protesting the uh, increased rates on our, on our water, water and sewer rates. Mm -hmm. and, uh, but interesting, as we looked into the problem, well naturally the people that are on fixed income or, or, or low income, uh, when you have your rates double, uh. Uh, it just breaks their back and they don't know what to do and we've had many cases of people like that. So there, there's um, two approaches. One, is, one approach is to try to, to uh, do something to help the people that are, that are poor. And the other approach is to go after the problem itself right. and to see is, is it systemic? Is, is, it, is it because of the way the system is, is set up? Well, apparently uh, there's some managers of uh, utility companies that have, have a list of all the things the state is doing that are increasing local costs unreasonably, mm -hmm. unreasonably, maybe as much as 100% more costs that people have to pay because of the unreasonable regulations. Now, in a neighboring county is Tuolumne County, mm -hmm. and, and there, they're taking an approach to try to get uh, ratepayers to write to the legislatures, identify the things that need to be reevaluated and, and reformed so that the local, they don't have these incredible costs right. In a way, fees. Oh, there's, uh -huh. there's just a t t there, there is a real ignorance. I think that I've, I've, I was 12 years in the legislature, both as a assembly member and as a senator, uh, before I was elected to the Board of Equalization, and and there is a real ignorance on uh, on behalf of many of those who are in the legislature between their policies that they that they somehow aspire to try to protect and promote and pass and the true effect on individuals. Right. I, 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 we're, one of the issues that I know is a big deal here in Calaveras County as it is throughout my district, and that is the issue that's, that, that's going on right now with, this Cal, the, with the fire fee. Yeah, fire. It's an outrageous fee. Um, you know, we are, we are supportive of the lawsuit that's going on in that process. We think it was done illegally, all kinds of problems. But I've been having telephone town halls up and down my district. Uh, and so far, we've had over 2,500 people on those calls. Oh, that's impressive. Um, you know, dealing with them, asking questions, telling them what they do. And, uh, and, the, and the saddest calls we get, and I get them every time we do this, is somebody who's on a fixed income, living in a mobile home, trying to go from check to check, living from, from, from check to check, and all of a sudden, the state of California says, you owe us $115 or $150 uh, for this state fire fee which isn't going to protect that, that, that home one bit. It's going to go ahead and go to some, some elusive you know, uh, prevention program. And it was only done to backfill government in Sacramento uh, because they needed to steal the money to balance a budget a couple of years ago. Um, you know, and, 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 and again, there's, there's no reality. In fact, there was, enough, there was actually a bill that was set to try to help those who have certain incomes at certain poverty rates so they could be protected from that fee, that bill couldn't even get out of committee. So it's interesting to me that we have many lot politicians up there that's seeing a liberal cause about how it is you need, you need to help the downtrodden, the, the folks that are really struggling, and here's a classic effect that their policies have and they're not willing to move on it. Oh, that's terrible. The, I understand um, uh, that when Governor Brown signed that uh, legislation, he commented that there was uh, dubious legality to this. Well, since he admits that uh, the legality is in question, it seems like uh, the effort that's being made now in the lawsuit might have a chance of success. Well, I think so, too, because, I mean, it's problematic in a lot of ways. Number one, you know, it was done with a two-thirds, it needed a two-thirds vote. It's right. clearly a tax. It's not a fee. Right. Uh, and it needs a, needed a two-thirds vote. They went around the process and didn't, didn't do that. In addition to that, people are truly not getting equal services for, the, for what they're paying for. Right. You've got some people, for instance, like I said, who are in almost urban areas, but they happen to be out of a, in, out of the, out of a city who are having to pay for this, who have absolutely no need for, quote, fire prevention programs. Right. Uh, and, 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 and yet they're having to pay that annual fee. You have people who live in these mobile homes right now who are having to pay, the ha pay that price per mobile home, even though there's just one parcel 
there that every mobile home owner in the midst in that in that in that in that mobile home park is having to pay that fee. But yet, if you lived in a condominium, you wouldn't have to pay that fee. Oh. It's just incredibly bad legislation, yeah. and it was done. The, it's done the way bad legislation happens. It happens late at night when nobody's watching, uh, and all of a sudden it becomes law, and nobody wants to take the time to fix it. Then, it's and almost, that's yeah. and that's why it is because the money is too important. Yeah, it's almost criminal. It is. Yeah, to me, it is. It is. Yeah. I listen to these phone calls, and it is a cr it's criminal to what we're doing to some of these yeah. some of these individuals. Now, I understand John Coppell is leading the lawsuit. Mm -hmm. Yeah, uh, Howard Jarvis Taxpayer Association. Yeah, and um, he said that it's so important for people to uh, um, who are subject to these rates to um, to sign a protest and become part of a class action lawsuit. Yeah. What happens is you have the ability to go ahead and you know to to appeal the. If, to appeal the fee, it, it's um, uh, and, and we encourage people to do that. It's a uh, it's it's a I forgot the name. It's a, I think it's officially called uh, the letter of protest is actually a, 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 a request of redetermination, um, and you can get that. You can see how to do that on on Howard Jarvis Taxpayer Association. Yeah. I also have a have a website at calfirefee.com which takes people right through the process to how you can make your appeal. Um, okay. It's really important that people do that appeal. Um, now, we also remind people, unfortunately, it's probably important that you pay the tax, too. Oh, yeah. Because what you don't want to do is you don't want to get caught by filing the appeal, not paying the tax, because, again, the legislature put on a huge penalty, 20% yeah. per month. Right. Uh, and so you want to protect yourself from that. You want to protect yourself from, from fees and interest. Uh, that the legislatures that I, you know, put on by 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 paying the fee, even though it's wrong, pay it and then do your letter of protest. Not a letter of protest, but file this this uh, request for redetermination. Yeah. That way, you protect yourself. You protect yourself because what what we don't know is exactly what the judge may decide. Right. And how that who gets their money back will be determined by that judge. Right. And so they might say, well, everybody who filed. Their claim will get their money back, yeah. and if you didn't file a claim, all of a sudden you're out of luck. So yeah. John's correct; you want to do that, and you can either go to his website or you can go to calfirefee.com, the one that we have, and it instructs everybody how to do that. Well, we'll uh, our our website is calaverastaxpayers.org, mm -hmm. and we'll link to that ourselves. Good. Good. But the latest information we had from John was that uh, there's a new letter that needs to be done, and this is a request for refund. Well, again, no, I, I, and this, this ties into uh, being part of a class action lawsuit. Right. No, I think what he means, though, he means the official document, which is there's really not a request for refund. There is a there is a letter of redetermination. That's the exact real letter that you have got to file. The legal the legal document. Because what you want to do is you want to make sure you have a legal document that puts you into that. Yes. And so that's what that does. And yeah. so and on that on that on that document is why it is that you believe you need to do that. So it's a it's a specific document that is available okay. for protest. In fact, as people got their got their uh, their 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 um, their bills, that would have been listed on their on how to do that there. But again, it's very confusing, and uh, and people only have 30 days after they get the bill. In yeah. order to do that, so uh, right now their second bill is going out as of uh, uh, last week. Yeah. The second year billing is going out, so this is a really important time. Uh, and the people in Calaveras County and in Amador and all these others, they're going to be getting there soon uh, because the way they're getting mailed out is they're being mailed out alphabetically by county. Yeah. And so it's important to do that, and it's important to do that in the 30 days. Calaveras. Window. Calaveras is at the beginning. You're going to be right in the beginning there. So yeah, yeah you're right. So so it's important to do that. And again, for any questions about that, about how to do that, you can go to to either one of those websites, and that'll that'll just redirect you. Yeah. For how to file, because it's got to be the form, the correct form that you actually file then with Cal Fire. Yeah. In order to do that. Yeah. I think we've uh, we have those uh, going for a while good, now. Good. Good. And now what? Else? What other tax issues are you working on right now? Well, well there's a couple of issues that we've got going that are, are great concerns uh, right now. For instance, you know, in order to open a business in the state of California, uh, and you want to go ahead and open a restaurant, or you want to go ahead and sell something, that the state requires you, the Board of Equalization requires you to put a deposit down in order to put up front your money for the money that you're going to collect from the state, for the state, with the sales taxes you're going to collect and remit to the state. And so what, what that is, is it's just a big hurdle for people starting businesses. 
Yeah. And we actually, the Board of Equalization right now has over, over $200 million in deposits from people who are just starting businesses, uh, and after three years, you get it back. But to us, that makes no sense. And so we're right, right now working hard to go ahead and refund that money to take away that, re that requirement. We don't think that should be a hurdle for entrepreneurs to start businesses in California. California is one of the few states that even does that. Yeah. And so we're in the midst of wanting to repeal that. Uh, we, and again, that's not a law. That's a, that's a regulation that was set by the Board of Equalization. Now, there's five of us on that board, the four of us that are elected by district and the state controller. And so we're working to get two other votes yeah. in order to get that. I think we're going to get there. Oh, which is going to actually be a refund to literally thousands of business people in the state of California. In addition, we're going to remove that hurdle for people who want to start a business. How do they, how do they determine how much a business needs to put on deposit? What happens is it, it, when people ask for a seller's permit, you know, you go into the Board yeah. of Equalization, you get a seller's permit so because you need one of those in order to start your business. Yeah. You put on there how much money you're going to be expecting to make. And that calculates out then what your deposit's going to be. Wow. Uh, and, uh, you know, I'll give you an example. I, I had a friend uh, in, in my hometown. I happened to be talking to the Rotary, and I was talking about this. And he's a car dealer, and he was just opening up a new line of cars that he was going to be selling. And he had just heard that he was going to have to do a $50,000 deposit in order to get another seller's permit for this particular kind of car that he was going to be selling. Well, this business has been in, 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 in the community uh, that I've been a part of for the last 65 years. And now all of a sudden we're saying, now you're gonna sell a different car, we, want, we, need, we, don't, we, we don't trust you, we're gonna get this $50,000. Well, we were able to go ahead and work through the process, get that waived, but we can't work on it. We, we, can, we, can, we can work on that for individuals and get it waived, but we just need a change of policy. Right. And so we're wanting to go ahead and do a policy that says, hey look, nobody has to pay a deposit. Now, if you've got a history of not paying your taxes, if you got a bad, if you got some problems like that, well then you may need to have to do a deposit. Yeah. But why should we think that the average person out there who wants to start a business and all of a sudden say, now in order to do, that, they have the honor of doing a business in California, in order to the honor of collecting money for the state of California that you're going to have to submit, you know, to somebody else. Yeah. Uh, you need to give us some money. Is an outrageous policy, and I think we're going to change it. Well, that's good. How, how, when do you think uh, that'll come about? I think we're going to. We'll, we'll be working on that in the fall. We're, we're, they're working on it now, but I think it'll probably come before us in the fall. Hopefully, something we can have accomplished then by the first part of next year. All right. Well, that's good. It's good. Good yeah. to have some good news for taxpayers. Well, again, we and, and, even and, if it's hopeful. Well, and, and again, we and, and every we you know, the, the interesting thing. If people have difficulties with any taxes or fees, we encourage them to call our office. Because we really do see ourselves as taxpayers. We are their elected advocate. We weren't elected to administer a tax agency. We were elected to represent the people when it comes to their tax issues. Yeah. And so every day we help taxpayers. Every day we, we, we deal with some taxpayer who, um, who either had an audit that was unfair and we can help them, or maybe they really, maybe they just had a really bad month and they didn't have the, the money that they came in to pay the sales tax. All of a sudden, they spent in other things, and now they don't have the money to pay, this, to pay the government back for the money that they used. They just need some help in that process. Yeah. And so we can help them through that. And so we encourage people to, to talk to us. What, what are the things are you working on? Well, one of the things we just remind people about is to do it early. Um, oftentimes, what people think is they, sometimes people think if they just ignore the tax problem, it'll go away. Nothing could be farther from the truth. If you ignore your problem, the problem is the interest gets worse, the penalties get worse, and it makes it harder for us to assist you. And so that's one of the things that we can work with is to really try to help people in the beginning when they're first having times. You know, one of the things I'm doing right now is I'm writing every new business that opens up in, in my district, uh, which again is 80, 60 percent of the land area, and thanking them for doing business in the state of California. And one of the things I'm telling them is, hey, we are here to help you succeed. And one of the things that we can do is, is we can have somebody come to your business, help you know exactly what you need to do to set up your books correctly, and help you get started on the right foot. What I find is the people who get into trouble are folks that all of a sudden, you know, they, they have this zeal to start their business. They want to do a great job, but they, for, they, and they think taxes is something they got to worry about over here. And they get focused on their advertising or on their product or all these other things that they're doing, and they kind of forget about this. And all of a sudden, four or five years later, they get an audit and they miss something. 
And well, a little something over four or five years can amount to a lot of money, enough to put you out of business. Yeah, for sure. And so one of the things that we're, we're writing everybody right now to say, hey, look, we want to come to your business and we want to help you in the beginning to know what is taxable, because sales tax in the state of California is a bit confusing. I mean, you know, whether it's a hot sandwich or a cold sandwich, depending on how it's taxed, but it, it's, it's a confusing process and misunderstood easily. Uh, and we want to help people from the very beginning and help them succeed. Do you have enough staff to help all these thousands yeah. of thousands of people? Yeah, we do. We do. We're, luckily, and, and again, because we not only have our staff, but we have the staff of the BOE to which we are wanting to help change the culture to say that our goal is to help people succeed, not to be punitive on them, not to chase after them, but to actually help them succeed. Because ultimately, the state of California succeeds when businesses and individuals succeed. Yeah, true. We don't succeed when it is that we, that, that we chase people down, that we, that we, that we force them into payment, payment uh, plans that they can't afford. That doesn't help them succeed, and it doesn't help the state of California succeed. What helps them is when they can stay in business and they can work on that. So yeah, we we're able to be able to do that. And we've been, like I said, um, you know, we got dramatic, I, I, we have examples of folks that were all of a sudden had a fine of a million dollars. Oh man. That would be, and because of a tax that they didn't understand, they weren't paying it, the fine was a million dollars. We were able to successfully get a tax like a, a penalty and, and, and uh, removed. Uh, and most of it was a was penalty. We, were got, a, we got the penalty um, reduced to $2,000 from a million dollars. Wow. Uh, and kept that business in the state of California working and hiring people in the state of California. Oh, well, that's awesome. So those are the kind of things that we can do every day helping taxpayers. Um, now, a lot of taxpayers are not in business. They're, they're, uh, they work for their employees. Mm -hmm. And uh, uh, in one way, you're helping them if they own property with the fire. Oh, absolutely. The fire tax or fire fee. Right. Um, are there other ways that... Uh, uh, th that the uh, Board of Equalization helps people that are not in business? Well, in fact, with it, there are, and, the, and we need to do, and we're trying to do more of it. Uh, the fire fee is a great example you're talking about. Uh, that all, all of a sudden, we got responsibility for sending those bills out. We don't have anything else. The legislature said, okay, Board of Equalization, you send those bills out. Well, we've been actively engaged then in not only sending the bills out, which we have to do by, by, under, by law, but we want to make sure people understand their rights along that. Of the 800,000 plus people who are getting those bills, over half of them live in my district. Oh, really? Um, so believe me, it is a big issue for my for our folks, and so that's why it is that we're wanting to help them understand what their rights are and what that's all what what's that that is all about. Um, one of the issues that we're working on right now is for seniors. You know, a lot of times these districts, special districts, pass t special district taxes for schools or parcel taxes for whatever. And there's often oftentimes a in order to get them to pass. You say there's a senior exemption, right? Yeah. And so that way the seniors say, okay, well, I vote for this because I don't have to pay it. Um, somebody else has got to pay it. And so they, and they kind of do that to help them pass. But you know that there's no process then to inform people later on as they become seniors that they won't have to pay that tax? And so one of the things that we're seeking to do is a process that will inform people when it comes to, their, when it comes to these special district taxes that they may have an exemption to not have to pay it if and see their certain age, depending upon what, what the standard was when that, when that was passed. Well, George, I'll tell you one thing. I'm sure glad to have you here on our program.